Hey, it's Sol. I hope you are doing well. And let's talk about account-wide access in World of Warcraft, and also the Heartbreaker mount from the holiday event that you may or may not have gotten this year. Today's video is going to be a conversation starter that asks, what, if anything, is there to learn from this new kind of mount drop? I'm not going to have any B-roll, it's just going to be me. And as usual, you, if you could you know, like the video, subscribe for more fun conversationalizing, and let's set this up. First off, let's talk about account-wide things in World of Warcraft. Now, in many ways, we've got it. We've got toys and mounts and pets and transmog. Those are like cosmetic rewards. And then there's not having to do the leveling campaign more than once, and renown levels that otherwise would restrict group events like the hunt and the community soup thing. All players can do those things after getting the chance to do them once. So those things fall under accessibility. Now, some things are account compromised, I guess, like as in the game acknowledges what we've done, but it doesn't give our alts the same thing. For for you just like, sort of, or at a discount. And what falls under that? There are reputation boosts and currencies like Primal Chaos that can be earned on one character and then traded to another after a little tax. And then there are other things about WoW that are just straight up separated per character, like the levels that are earned, the gear that's obtained, and specific character-based achievements like Gladiator titles. Dragonflight has been introducing new account-wide stuff, like, for example, the quest to earn Revival Catalyst charges is credited across the account, and the charges themselves are gained account-wide. Thankfully, though, the charges are spent per character. Like, it'd be pretty awful if we had to share the weekly charge across, like, however many characters, right? The Traveler's Log and the Trader's Tender, it's the same thing, kind of. Progress is shared account-wide, but the Tender falls under a single shared pool. Fortunately, though, Tender is only spent on cosmetics, which is account-wide stuff, and so all that works out pretty nicely. Here's why I'm bringing these up, though. First, there's the ongoing debate on how to define account-wide, as in how far should it go, what restrictions seem reasonable, and what is clearly Blizz just trying to increase their MAUs, right? The discussion will go on until the game shuts down, and even then, gaming scholars in the dankest of forums are going to theorize on how it related to WoW's ultimate downfall. I'm also bringing these up because of the Heartbreaker mounts, because it introduced another sort of account-wide thing that some would say is a little bit more insidious. It sounds well-intentioned, but in reality, what's really going on? The Heartbreaker is the most notorious mount in the world of Warcraft for its former name as a dick joke, but more so its painfully low drop rate. This year, the WoW team changed the way that this thing dropped. The first character across the Battle.net account who completed the event and opened up the heart-shaped box would have a greatly increased chance of this mount dropping. Other characters can still run the event at least, but their drop rate would be the same as usual. How did that generally affect the game and player behavior? Obviously, I don't have the data, but I can say with confidence that more mounts have been dropping if social media is any indicator. That's good, right? But among hopeful mount farmers, player behavior didn't change much. If the first drop of the day had a higher chance, players were at least left with a choice if, after the first drop, to keep going, as they always did. Now, let's say that some didn't and some did, but people who really, really were invested into getting this mount, of course they ran it on every eligible character every single day until the event was over. I noticed more than a few people on social media, who, especially those who weren't getting this mount, suggesting that to increase the drop rate of the mount even further, they would consider creating a new Battle.net account and new character just so they can have an additional high drop rate chance per day. I have no clue if these people went through with it, but it suggests some possible extreme player behavior. At the risk of fear-mongering, I've got to ask, is it going to end here? Is this the start of other so-called account-wide shenanigans? I have a feeling that if they were to go further down this route, that it would anger more than a few players. Like, imagine if Invincible or Memoron's Head or that one mount from the world boss was given the same kind of treatment and you knew that your additional attempts per week wouldn't have as good of a chance as your first. On the other hand, some people who are at a level where, you know, they don't mind farming, but they don't care to run 10 alts through the same instance, 
they might see this as a quality of life improvement. But what if we were to slide over to something a bit more extreme where the drop rate of amount was pretty decent, but you only had one shot at it per week across the account? Speaking for me, I think diminishing drop rates account-wide doesn't work out very well because players still have the high possibility of coming away with nothing, and that doesn't feel good. I'd almost think that one chance across the account is simple and easier to understand because at least after that first time, the player can move on to something else for the remainder of the week. It's still debatable though. Reputation and currencies though, I think that's a different story. In the discussion surrounding the likes of account-wide rep, I've often pointed out that for us to ask for reputation to be earned account-wide, it would also mean some sort of different compromise. So let's pretend that we're doing centaur hunts for the week. I do it on my first character on the account, it's the first one that I do, and I get that purple box, whoopee. And then I happen to do another one. I get a blue box, so the reward diminishes a level. We are pretty familiar with this. But then, what if I were to switch to another character, and then I do a hunt, it's that character's first hunt of the week, but I get a green box, and then a white box afterwards. Would it be a good thing if the numerical rewards like currency and rep were account-wide, but the entire account was subject to diminishing returns? I think that with some finagling, it can be. Because as a result, instead of the random epic that we get from the purple bag, we'd probably instead see a token that we can use to get a reward based on our class or spec, and we could just move that around. It would be cumbersome to think about like which character would need to get the good box from, you know, to make sure that they're the ones who get gear, and then the one that already has a lot of gear, they can just get like the crappier boxes. It'd be kind of awkward. But this also brings us back to the biggest reason why we probably don't have account-wide reputation as we know it, and it's kind of a technical one. What if I have two WoW accounts and I'm logged on at the same time? Does this mean that I get double the reputation whenever it's earned? Do I get two epic bags? But what sort of engineering has to be done to ensure that character one gets the purple bag and character two gets the blue one? Does that mean that we shouldn't have multiple accounts logged on at the same time ever again for the sake of this account-wide scheme? We're starting to go down a game design rabbit hole of sorts because the answer to that question it would be to have some sort of system or an NPC that manages earned rewards like these, but instead of inserting them, you know, like these bags into a character's inventory, it's instead dispensed through that system or NPC that can only be accessed by one character at a time on the account. Now, what I just described might sound more than a bit confusing, but I also described a version of that treasure chest from the trading post where you do things for, I guess in this case, reputation or currencies, and then the game tracks it all as you do it, and then it puts it in a box somewhere else for you to loot later on. It can possibly work, and you might love it or totally hate it. Do I think an account-wide diminishing drop chance of stuff like mounts works? No, not so much. What would players who only play one character or very few characters think about all of this? They probably wouldn't like it. But as for currencies and reputations, I think a path is kind of sort of starting to reveal itself. Now, I'm not here today to solve problems or persuade, I'm just here to share a few thoughts and to start a conversation. So I would like to hear from you in the comments. So like the video, subscribe for more, and I'll see you next time. Stay safe, stay healthy, and stay breezy. Mm -hmm.